Hello. Stuart. Hi, William. How are you doing, man? I'm good. You're three minutes early. <laughs> You're 24 hours late. <laughs> I'll say, yeah, cheers, mate. Cheers. How's it going? All right. Good, it's really good. Yourself? Oh, not not bad. It's been it's been a long day over here in the UK. It's um, what six p.m. now, so it's felt like one of those one of those days, you know. But it's all good. It's all good. How's it in LA at the moment? You're in LA at the moment, yeah? Los Angeles yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's cooling down. Yeah. It had a lot, lot, couple of last last couple of days have been hot, but it's uh, it's cooling down a bit. Um. Yes, it's interesting because you're in Glasgow, right? No, I'm I'm just north of Aberdeen, so oh, okay. east east coast. So, um, so you, your weather would be a bit more like it is in New Zealand. Yeah, um, lots of rain, um, quite mild. We we tend to escape the, um, the 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 bad weather on the west coast and the winds and stuff. But you know, we get the um, we get the this stuff coming down from Norway and Scandinavia and that sort of thing. So it can get really cold once we're up January, February, you know. But it's wet. That's that's the main thing, you know. So yes, well, in Wellington, in Wellington, you get the rain and you get the wind <laughs> <laughs> and you get cold, <laughs> and but it does heat up in the summer. Yeah. Um, yes, good to talk to you, yeah. Stuart. So I... have we? Officially started. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll, I'll edit. I'll edit any any sort of bits and pieces out. But yeah, well, we'll let, let's go from now. I mean, thanks for talking to me. I know you're busy. I know that you've kind of, um, you know, got a huge amount of things going on. I, I want to talk if I can in a little bit just about Rogue Warrior and the stuff you're doing with Neil and Tracy and that sort of thing. Um, but there were a couple of films I just wanted to talk about briefly. I don't know if you remember them. Um, something to do with the Hobbit or something. I think. Um, that you oh, that yeah, 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 that little that thing. <laughs> oh, please talk about the Hobbit. I, 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 even though you're probably, I don't know, maybe you're sick to the back teeth of maybe talking about it. I don't know, maybe, you know. Um, oh, never get sick of it because um, I was just saying yesterday. Actually, I did a um, what, for one ring. That's the fan site. Yeah, for the <clears throat> Middle Earth. Um, I went on their webcast. And the fact is, it was an insane, life-changing experience. And I was sitting here, you know, like I was sitting in their studio last night yeah. in Los Angeles thinking, oh, my God, look where I am. Yeah. <laughs> and that is thanks to The Hobbit, without a doubt. How did you get involved then? Did you, I mean, I assumed you auditioned. Um, how, did you, how did you land the part? I, um, <clears throat> the only reason I remember this is because months before I got offered the role, yeah. and it was about six months I had forgotten that I auditioned for the master of um, for the master okay. with Stephen Fry, play, oh, master right. of Lake Town. Okay. <clears throat> so, and the only reason I remembered is because two years or a year after the first film came out, um, we got a thing from Warner Brothers saying we would like to release. Um, a video of you of your audition process and okay. how you guys ended up being cast and that I watched the and, and we had to okay the footage so you know or I had to so I watched it and then I saw that audition and I remembered that I'd auditioned for the Master of Lake Town uh, because and the only reason I mentioned this is because when I actually got offered the when the phone call came in mm. 2010 I got offered the role it was completely out of the blue I had not auditioned for Biffa or any of the dwarves, yeah. and I had so I had no comprehension. It was really like somebody calling saying that you'd won the lot, the lottery. <laughs> it was just, it was just like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> um, and so it was amazing, and I floated on a cloud for about three days yeah. of um, you know. Had knowing you... that it's just such a huge deal, but it was only two films then. Yeah, I was I was going to ask you about that because I mean, had you read the book beforehand? Then I mean, obviously you're familiar with the story, but had you read The Hobbit before? Oh yeah, yeah, this? yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. in fact, uh, I just said this again last night. That yeah. This is absolutely the truth. As a child, I, I got out of the drama out of drama school. Okay. I, I graduated from drama school in the late 1970s, and uh, about that time, a movie came out. A little bit earlier, called the song remains the same. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was Led Zeppelin, right? Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. I bloody love 
loved Led Zeppelin. I was so me, into Led me Zeppelin. too, big fan. And uh, in Song Remains the Same, they did the song Ramble On that yeah, mentioned yeah. Gollum and Mordor yeah. and, and had a whole lot of imagery that was so taken. And that's when I read Lord of the Rings. So Led Zeppelin got me into uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. Well, I think I mean it's a common thing. I mean the Led Zeppelin connection with with all that stuff is i mean I, i'm a big zeppelin fan i mean i first got into the hobbit i think i was about nine or ten and my school teacher would read it to us on a friday afternoon and would, like a chapter a week and it was like the highlight of my week <laughs> and it was it was i love that because yeah, i've heard that a few times yeah, about teachers t yeah. amazing teachers that and, do that and for the life of <laughs> me and to my shame i can't remember the guy's name but it changed my life because it was it was just a whole world and I was say I was about nine or ten, and then I tried. I went down to the library after he read it, and I went to try and read *The Lord of the Rings*. And as a ten-year-old, it was just that huge leap, you know, um, in, t in types of story yeah. and that. But I can remember, you know, sort of, you know, crying when the, you know, the Battle of the Five Armies and all that stuff, you know. And and it's really interesting that, you know. People like yourself, it's, it's kind of like a life changing thing. I mean, I'm a fan. I'm not. I'm not a mega fan. You know, how, how did you feel about what the reaction would be? Because you got you've got to admit that there are some quite keen fans out there. So did it did it kind of frighten you a wee bit when you thought, oh my god, am I going to offend people or or what? You know, no, not as such. What was incredible <clears throat> was as an actor suddenly being, you know, finding yourself. I found myself in places in the world and being chased down in the most bizarre place <laughs> where you wouldn't, uh, like I did a convention in Sweden and Jed Brophy and I, Jed, who played um, Nori, yeah. we uh, we got the ferry over to Copenhagen and got, got the ferry and then a train to yeah. Copenhagen, yeah. okay, and it was about, you know, an hour or so, hour and a half. And anyway, and then we were walking in the streets of Copenhagen and suddenly we be these people rushed up to us <laughs> for autographs and they had their pens and everything already yeah, and it yeah. was just absolutely things like that that is so out like how did they know that we were there and the other one is um landing at airports and being chased down and being chased down on the street in um um when we did the premiere for the first sure, film being yeah. chased down the street in england you know it's yeah, just yeah, in, yeah. London, in london and it's just insane so that's that was different but i just, I love the fan thing. I mean, well, for a start, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the fan thing. And especially with the, with the whole Lord of the Rings franchise, which goes back to the 1930s and yeah. to be part of something that started way back then. And, yeah, and, and also, yeah. just like yourself, when I read, I came to reading Lord of the Rings at a time when I was just the right age. Yeah, yeah. Because I was old enough to comprehend it, and I was also at a stage where I actually really – drank it in yeah it wasn't like i started to read it and got bored with it and then had to pick it up again i mean yeah. i really drank the, i I, the, I just loved those books so to be part of that is is an incredible honor yeah and to go down in history as being the peter jackson's embodiment of one of the dwarves yeah. of <laughs> yeah. yeah you know the human dwarf <laughs> it's pretty amazing well, it was an amazing ride. There was, I know there was a bit of, was it a little bit of controversy about Biffy, wasn't there, when um, some fans didn't quite like the idea about the axe in the head and, and the the, slight, the difference on the books. I mean, what did you think of, of, of that? I can imagine you would well, have quite enjoyed it. The, you know, the, the, well, my take on that is the moment I saw that axe, when we, for a start, they tried very, very hard to give, to make, each dwarf incredibly distinctive. Yeah. And yeah. I really appreciate that because they could have been quite easily, and they are almost in the books at times, like yeah. Yeah. 13 because there's Thorin. But you know what I mean? 13 yeah. different versions of the same yeah. long hair, long beard, yeah. grizzled dwarf. And their take on it was to put the most incredible designers, and I met the designer that yeah. designed me, yeah. <laughs> and to actually put a complete spin on each of those characters. And yeah. I absolutely loved that and I um, really respected that. Yeah. So what happened was that when we were very, our very first meeting, we all got together and we're all sitting around the table in the design studios, actually. 
and it was with Peter Jackson and Fr- Fr- the writers Fran and Philippa, and it was Ian McKellen. Everybody was there. It was a wow. very wow. big deal of yeah. holding up huge pictures of each of our characters. They yeah. had to hold them up, and we go, oh, because each one was more outrageous <laughs> than the other. And then they got to me, and I oh, no, I've got an axe in my head. But in that meeting, in that meeting, they also said, look, we'd, we're happy for you. You know, we'd like you to actually come up with ideas of yeah, how yeah. Your, your character could journey through the film. And so the whole axe thing set me to thinking, and I uh, I knew that because there were 13 of us, we weren't all going to say a hell of a lot, because yeah. that's just the nature of yeah. filmmaking. And so out of that, that grew the idea over the next two or three weeks, or four, or actually a couple of months, of the idea that Biffle would speak in Kuzdal yeah, yeah. because of the injury in his head. And so I went away and did some research on on what a brain injury um, uh, can do to you sure. and the idea that it can affect people like that thing called foreign language syndrome. Yeah, yeah. And they, they start talking in foreign yeah. languages. And yeah. so that was the idea for Biffa was that, and also the fact that he would be completely, the X made him like really is the odd one out. Biffa is an odd one out. Yeah. Because all the yeah. other brothers, the yeah. brothers, and Biffa is the cousin of Bomber and Biffa, uh, of Bo- Bother and Bomber. Yeah. He's the cousin. Yeah. And so he's kind of out on a limb. And so I kind of ran with that and the idea that he is the guy that they didn't really want to take on the journey, but they had to. <laughs> <laughs> is that that little younger brother that you to trail yeah. there at? <laughs> Them at home. What? <laughs> Who's going to look after him? Yeah. But as the journey goes on, Biffa becomes a bit more lucid um, yeah. because you can't have a guy just standing around looking lost. True. For yeah. Three films. True. Because it just gets a bit boring. I, I, <laughs> it I, worked for the first bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, I t- I but it was you... amazing to be able to be able to actually input into the idea of and then come up with ideas yeah. that ended up a film. Is Not it... just me. The ideas came from Peter sure. and because yeah. he's the boss and yeah. you know. The, and also the idea that the axe, because we seeded, I see very early on started talking about the idea that the axe would come out of his head in the Battle of Five Armies and that he would be able to speak right. normally. Right. Which, thank you, Peter Jackson, eventually. <laughs> in an incredible scene. Only in the extended version. <laughs> well, I've seen the extended version, you're quite right. It's interesting you said about, you know, the fact that obviously you knew that you wouldn't have a huge amount of dialogue because of so many characters to fit in. I may be doing you. Right. I may be doing you a disservice here. Um, was there a little bit, and it, it, for all you guys, in maybe trying to get a bit of the attention when you're in the background, maybe doing little things that would be absolutely, you know, so like absolutely. I'm here, look at me, sort of thing. Yeah. No, totally, totally. Yeah. But that's you know, for one thing, it's like a competitive sports team. Yeah. You've got a bunch of guys that are actually. Hugely com- competitive in a good way. Yeah, all yeah, yeah. very experienced actors, and all have been in the business for a long, long time, and all put in a position where your job is to bring something. Yeah. To the, you know, when you're called onto the set to bring something to the set, because that's the nature of having thirteen characters on a set. Also, yeah. the director can see what you do, and he can say yes or no, but he can't necessarily come up with thirteen different ideas for what you do. Yeah. In in that frame, not necessarily. Your job is to come up with ideas and to come up with suggestions, and that's what, what is amazing about working with Peter Jackson is that he is open to that. Mm. I mean, you choose your time. You, you know, when you're working with a director and you're an actor, you don't blurt out when he's talking to um, Orlando Bloom from the back of the room. You don't say, <laughs> "Hey, what if I tried this?" <laughs> But when it's your turn, when it's your turn, he comes around and you're, and you're talking, you say, hey, what if I try this? Yeah. What do you think of that? And he, you know, and um, certain things out of that's wonderful to work with a director that has the confidence to be yeah. able to listen and to not feel threatened when actors make offers yeah. and suggestions. And so Peter was like that. And so part of the thing, right, once again, because it's an organic process, mm. is um, early on is he worked quite actively with us to come to, to, to present ideas. Yeah. And I said to him at one stage, look, Peter, because Biffa is, you know, slightly nuts. <laughs> what, what do you think I, you know, what kind of thing should I be looking for? And he said, William, what you should do 
is do something completely different from what anybody else is doing. <laughs> <laughs> I think of things. <laughs> so that's what I would do when I would come to the set. I'd see what props are there, what ideas, right. and what ideas presented themselves, and then I would think, how would Biffa deal with this? You okay. know, what would Biffa's right. take be on that? Yeah. Um, so I hope that answered your question. Yes, yeah. we all did of ideas. Yes, it was a little bit competitive, but only in a kind of a, in a in a way that you're all on the same team. Yeah. yeah. And you're all going for the same goal and you're all trying to actually just make the best kind of possible thing that you possibly can. Yeah, I mean I mean looking at I mean obviously I've watched I'm a I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to all the extra stuff and I, I you know watch Good. it all and stuff. I love all that stuff. The thing that comes across it seems to come across that you all got on really well. I mean, I know you, you know, that's what you probably say, but it does seem that it was like everybody was kind of just like in it together and there was no, no backstabbing or anything like that. Was that, is that well, a fair reflection? Then? Weird. You're working with Peter Jackson. He's one of the greatest directors in the world yeah. and one of the most successful. Now, it's an ensemble, yeah. and that is the yeah. other great thing about it, is you don't get treated any differently from Ian McKellen or Martin Freeman or, or any of there's no delineation. like It doesn't work like that yeah. when you're working with somebody like yeah. Peter. <laughs> the fact is you're there for the duration. You're hired. You've got the job. And it doesn't matter who you are. He is the. It's his vision that you're yeah. trying to work towards. Yeah. And so all the cast, and, and then I'm including people like Orlando Bloom and Evangeline, and everybody is in the same kind of, in the same boat. Mm. And so egos don't come into it as much. It's not star driven. Yeah. It's character driven. It's story driven, and it's Peter Jackson driven. Yeah. And so that's just the way. Of it. And that is a wonderful atmosphere to work in. As yeah. An actor. Yeah. You know, uh, it's just great. What about makeup? I mean, was that a bit of a bind? How long would would you be in makeup to get? Yeah. That was hours. Really few, yeah. Um, it came a pro uh, when we first started. Um, actually, it's interesting you should ask because it, whenever I, you know I talk. Like this, it brings up memories of how the thing yeah. unfolded. Mm. And when we first started doing makeup tests, they actually, uh, Frank, I'm trying to think his name now, um, the guy that designed my makeup, did a brilliant, brilliant shot. That's the very first picture they held up of me. Right. It looked great, like a rock and roll dwarf. Yeah. That's, and I ended up being like that. But the first makeup tests that actually given this huge long nose, like a Dick, um, <laughs> on the end of my face, <laughs> and it's bad enough anyway. <laughs> well, I've got, yeah, I'm with but you. Anyway, so, oh look, and my heart bloody oh, and the axe was huge. The axe, half his head was split yeah. open. It, to me, I I straight away knew. I said nobody is going to want to look at this character. Yeah, you know, and that is just because it was just too, and it's just part of the process of creating um, something that is a drawing and a yeah. whole lot of designers work not to the actual real thing, the real prosthetic. So it was a huge, huge wound on his head and the axe was really big and the nose was big. And we, this was during makeup tests. And so during that one particular makeup test, Fran was there and um, Philippa seeing us all. Yeah. And I, I turned sideways and I took the nose I took the nose and I pushed it up <laughs> and I said it should the profile should look more like this. So they redesigned the okay. makeup and uh, thank goodness it ended up actually being pretty much the spitting image of what the designer had first created, right. which was because and Biffa became known as the rock and roll dwarf. Yeah. And what is even more amazing, <clears throat> you'll have to try and Google this. Uh, the, you'll know what I'm talking about when you see the image because okay. it really is cool that the, 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 the design of, uh, drew yeah. <clears throat> uh, is that I, Biff was kind of known as the rock and roll the Keith Richards of the you know and I'd go around and say always oh, the Keith Richards <laughs> Keith Richards fell out of a tree in Fiji while the Rolling Stones were down in our part of the world <laughs> and bumped hit his head so that was part of my inspiration yeah. but anyway the end of the story is that I was looking, about a year ago. I was looking at one of the books um, that came out of Weta about the third film, and it, and it got to a description of my character, and it, it said that Keith Richards was one of the inspirations <laughs> for the design of my character. I didn't even know. I just sort of like it was body osmosis. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so look, it was just 
what was great is just working with so many talented, creative people. And that is like a film like that. It doesn't come along very often where no. they have the money to pay real ironmongers and real woodworkers mm. and to bring all of these crafts and give them a whole new life. Yeah. Because these guys are usually going around in hippie village fairs and yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Of, but all of a sudden, it's the real deal. And my gosh, Stuart, there's so much that you don't see on the um, in the film that yeah. was made. All real, all in. You would not believe <laughs> the level of talent and creativity yeah. and, and things like. Um, handmade nails and and um, handmade yeah. dwarf nails and designed, insane. Anyway, yeah. never mind. Yeah, um, I'm going on. No, it's it's, it's real. On. It's real. It's real interesting because, uh, like I said, I, I I drink in the extra stuff, and you do get a little flavour of the attention to detail, and that's why. I mean, I love the Lord of the Rings stuff. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not precious when it comes to adaptations. I think they're two very different. You know, mediums, and I know that a lot of people, yeah, you know, didn't like things yeah. being left out of certain stories. I know that some people didn't like. That's it right, being... and that's and I think that's all valid. You know, yeah. everybody, yeah. everybody's opinion is valid. Absolutely, just like Peter Jackson's is valid. Yeah, exa exactly. I mean, and when I first saw the films, I'll admit I I enjoyed them, but I I I thought yeah, great. But each time I've watched them, and I, and I watched um, Unexpected Journey just the other night. It was on a TV. And I'm flicking through, and it was about 20, 25 minutes into the film, and I'm watching it again. And I think it's one of the, it's a strange thing. It seems to improve on each viewing. Um, and now, for me, you know, the three films, I absolutely adore them. Um, and I think they will stand the test of time. I think probably, I think people will look back and think maybe, not necessarily they weren't underappreciated, I don't, I don't mean bad, but I think they will, they will gain in... Admiration as years go on, I really, I really do because I think that it, it, it I will. Hope so. You know, I really, genuinely believe that. Um, I mean, do you, what's your 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 best memory and your worst memory of making that film, or those three films? Then? Best memory. There's too many worst. good. There's too many. There's too many good memories. Yeah. <clears throat> Honestly, there's too many good memories, and the, the worst memory, I guess, is just how incredibly hot and tired. And exhausted, we did actually get. It was very, it was very, very. I mean, I hate to sound like a, a dick because the fact is, it was an incredible experience. Mm. But it was very, very hard work at times. Those costumes were all. Re oh, this was. Oh, we you asked about the makeup, yeah. and I ran on. No, when we first did the makeup, it like took four and a half hours yeah. for the first two, three weeks, you mm. know, until we start. Things started to get. And that was for everything. But until things started to actually gel, it was a process of getting to know your makeup person, mm. people, getting to know you and you getting to know them and getting to know yeah. the process. And so it came down to about two and a half hours for everything. But the same thing with the costumes. The costumes were all real and incredibly heavy and layer after layer after layer. Yeah. And part of the early process was actually finding out and going us complaining and going to the wardrobe people and then stripping out the bottom layer. Yeah. So they would actually sew in a cuff that it looked like you had right, things on right. it. You did it. But, um, and that helped an awful lot. And, uh, but, for example, you you know, with those costumes, you actually had trouble lifting your arm above shoulder height right. because it was just so heavy. Yeah. And it we had to run and bite and hold our weapons <laughs> and swing and swing. And when Jackson said action, you actually did that and you forgot about the pain and the suffering. <laughs> but when it said cut, <laughs> and you all go, <laughs> <laughs> really, it was like that. <laughs> we, I, I really yeah. don't feel sorry for you at Please. all. I'm sorry, but I just don't. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no sympathy. Here's a good story. Because of this, and we've got to move on to Road War yeah. and, and Time War. Yeah. But um, because of that, because we were uncomfortable and we were yeah. hot and because we're actors and we complain, um, <laughs> but also we loved it and sure. we'd do it. Yeah. It was hilarious. One day Peter arrived on set and he was wearing a full, I don't know if you've heard this story, a full uh, um, rifleman's um, 
uniform from the first, from the Great War, from the First World no, War. A British this. Okay, all right. Full khaki, helmet, the weapon, yeah. the pack. And he, he said, hold this. Hold this gear. And he came out completely dressed in that. It was <laughs> absolute cosplay. <laughs> and... <laughs> And those guys had to carry like 70 pounds of gear sure, yeah. in the war. Yeah. And so he was, in a, in, a, in a joking, funny way, he's making the point was, look what these young guys had to yeah. go. They yeah. had to go and fight real wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were hot and things were heavy. And, and so, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe you should think about that a bit. <laughs> Whereas we're just going out pretending. <laughs> It's, it's all re it's all relative, though, isn't it? It's all relative. I mean, you know, I mean, it was a, actually a really good point. From that moment on, I, I thought I stopped moaning so much because I thought <laughs> there are people that are actually real heroes that go and fight real wars and have to put up with so much. And here are we, a bunch of actors <laughs> pretending we're fighting wars. <laughs> so, I mean, life changing, obviously. Um, you're in LA now. Do you live in? Los Angeles now is that permanent? Yeah. So how long have you been? Yeah, how long have you been there for? I still got I still got a house and a family back in Wellington, New Zealand. Right. Okay. And so I go back about every two and a half, three months. But we made the decision that on the back of the Hobbit, that the, the thing is, in New Zealand, I've been an actor for a very long time, and I've done a lot of theatre, especially when yeah. I was younger, and yeah. a lot of them, and. Um, I'm at an age where I can't do much else. And in New Zealand, there's just not enough work yeah. to sustain. Yeah. So I made the decision on the back of The Hobbit to actually give it a go over here. And it is incredible to live in a place where you are surrounded by the... I've had to work on my American accent. Yeah, yeah. But you're surrounded by the industry. It's like uh, this town is built on it. It's, yeah. It's... Uh, like, I mean, you know, it's like if you're a coal miner, <laughs> if you get a coal mining yeah, town, yeah, yeah, a town. Yeah, yeah. whereas it doesn't matter where in the city you are, and it's a big city, you come across film sets and you come across studio acting studios and casting. It's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that is actually invigorating. It's, am it's an amazing, because from little old New Zealand, I've been active for 40 years, it is, you're still slightly unusual. Yeah. Well, you know, it's yeah. an unusual profession. Yeah. Uh, even though it's, you know, because you're on TV and it, people see you, they recognize you, they kind of do have a, a relationship with that. But over here, it's completely normal yeah. to actually say you're an actor and that's the way you make your living. Yeah. So I do love that. Yeah. I do love it. I love uh, Los Angeles. I really, really enjoy it. So enjoy how, the, um, how did you then get involved? I mean, Rogue Warrior is. I mean, I, I loved Rogue Warrior. I was lucky enough to see a preview of it before it, it did, um, before it came out on DVD and, and so forth. Um, I thought it was excellent. You know, production of it. The, you know, the the another ensemble thing as well with you and Tracy and, and, and so forth. Absolutely. How did you get involved with that? How did you get to work with with Neil? Oh well, look. I think um, I. Oh, I uh, I I. First came got to know Tracy and Neil because my manager put me forward to voice the my, the lead villain robot for Rogue Warrior. Right, right. So I sent in a voice uh, um, demo, and then Neil and Tracy, as producer, looked up my um, and watched my uh, my demo. Yeah. Not my voice demo, sorry, my acting demo, and yeah. they really liked what they saw. And next minute, we struck up a relationship, and and since then, the relationship has blossomed. I I love working with them both, and I love working with Neil because I Neil is just between you and I. Don't tell him. <laughs> he's a quiet genius. He really does. And I, this sounds crazy, but it's true. It does remind me of working with Peter Jackson right. on a completely different scale. Right. Because Peter, when Peter Jackson started. He he's a true filmmaker. He makes all his own stuff, and you would have yeah. seen his early yeah. stuff. Yeah. Frank did, and he yeah. um, he's that hands-on kind of person. And Neil is exactly the same. Neil is a quiet genius. He just gets on and creates the most incredible <coughs> things. And I have amazing respect for filmmakers that just just go ahead and make films. Yeah. You know, and I have the saying that is some people, and quite rightly. 
They find the money to go and make a film. Yeah. Other people go and make a film and find the money. Yeah, yeah, I've got you. I've got you. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, and Neil is like that. He yeah. just, he is a, he's a filmmaker through and through. And if even he had nothing, he would still be making films. I mean, I was lucky enough to speak. I spoke to him um, last week for one of these little things for, for the for the website, and um, I would agree. I mean, he comes across as uh, he's he's a, you know a likable guy. Um, he knows his stuff. He's incredibly passionate. Um, and you can see that there's a drive there that's kind of a kind of steely drive to succeed and to make film, regardless of what anybody you know thinks. And that comes across with Rogue Warrior. It looks as, as if you know it's it's a great production to say that it was probably. And I don't know how much was spent on it on a, on a small budget. You know, com completely the opposite of something like you know The Hobbit. Um, you know, yeah. between you and me, I, I won't tell him you said this. I mean, how much of a tyrant is he really? You know, Neil. I mean, I, yeah. Between you and me, just just he's not a tyrant. He's just <laughs> um, well, when you're working, you, you know, you're used to working with Peter. You know, when you uh, and harking back yet again, yeah, you get used to as an actor. Uh, maybe it's a New Zealand thing. I mean, you shut up and do the job. Yeah, yeah. The thing is with Neil, he does. He pushes you, and yeah. he keep, he pushes you. He, he doesn't care that you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, he's like Peter Jackson's like that. Peter Jackson is only interested in the shot, and I've got a feeling with Peter that working with Peter, because we would do these running shots, yeah. insane running yeah. shots, and we were obviously all exhausted. But he would still make us do it again and again and yeah. again and again. Yeah. He would say, "That was great. Now let's do one for luck." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you. You've already done about six, and you've run. Yeah, you've run and run to the point of exhaustion. And my theory is that Peter Jackson really likes it when you are really exhausted, not <laughs> pretend exhausted, because it looks better for the shot. Right? And I think yeah. Neil is a bit the same. Neil's a bit the same. <laughs> I mean, he, when... just, he drives you. He, dr he drives you because what he what he's seeing through the lens is what he is looking for. Yeah. He's not particularly yeah. concerned with your welfare. He is. <laughs> <laughs> and he I doesn't mean, want you to die. I mean, I, when it's, I, it's not the most important thing. He pretends. He pretends. He yeah, you know, if, if, if you just you about live, then everything else is a bonus. I mean, yeah, that, that seems very. I mean, I spoke to him last week and I said to him, Look, I want you to tell William Kircher to get in touch with me because I'm desperate to speak to him. And he did say to me, He goes, Well, I might need to leave it a couple of days because I kind of worked him a little bit hard yesterday. He'd have seen that you're doing we from did. time well. We did and he said that you and you day. and Tracy, he said um, basically, he said, and, and he said in his words, and I'm not just saying this now, these, what, this is what he said, he said, this is some of the best acting that William's ever done in this particular scene, absolutely nailed it. He said, but I think I might have hurt him a little bit. <laughs> it gave him a few days to get back in touch. So, you know, I think, yeah. I was exhausted. It did actually take me a few days to recover, I have to be honest. Yeah. It, was, it was a tough day, yeah. that particular day. Uh, I took the time wall. Yeah. Look, Tracy is fantastic. Tracy and I, for some reason, I don't know why, um, we just seem to click on screen. And it's just one of those very old-fashioned, you know, it's like from the 1930s and 1940s. Mm. Um, I don't know why. It's um, and We end up getting uh, close, really close face-to-face. -face, yeah. and, and you never know the characters are going to kiss each other or kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for, for, for those that don't know, the Time War is, um, um, it's what, an everyday tale of a time-travelling Hitler type, you know, sort of thing. Um, yes. Have you finished filming it now? Is, it, is yours done or is it going to be an ongoing I thing? I, I, won't, I, I won't say never say never again. I mean, probably not. Right. Um, I think there's probably a little bit some more pieces, pieces to do. Most yeah. of it is in the can. Yeah, yeah. But knowing Neil, knowing Neil um, there's always the possibility of other bits and pieces to be done. I, I mean, the but I'm so looking forward to it. Because yeah, me too. Me too. For a start, what I think what what I think that team did with Rogue Warrior Robot Fighter was incredible. I mean, yep. they yep. took a look film and they got Sony distribution. They got a Sony distribution deal, which in this town is like, oh my God, yeah. because there's little yeah. things everywhere. And they really cracked it. And the time war was a hugely that, that's the one that's been eating inside of Neil for a long time. I it's know, been yeah, in the yeah. making for a long time, and it is an epic. And once again, it reminds me of Peter Jackson because he's got this epic journey in his head. Yeah, and it's like he's got this epic jigsaw in his head, 
and you are a piece, you know, of that jigsaw, yeah. about that big. Or well, that big. Um, <laughs> depending, um, hopefully that big. And as part of his vision. Yeah. And so you have a trust. Yeah. And that's with Peter, but it's, it's the same with Neil. Neil has this film mapped in his head, and uh, I'm, I still am not 100% want to know what it's all about, and I know <laughs> that I'm not going to know what it's all about until I absolutely see the finished product yeah. because I have not seen any of the rushes or anything. I tend to kind of stay away from that. I like to – I know I, I know as, a, 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 as an actor I, I have a – because I'm reasonably experienced – I have a feeling I know when a take is right. Okay. You know, when you've okay. nailed it and you've got the truth there and okay. you're in the moment and you're in the zone. Yeah. And it's real. And so I don't like going and watching it later on. I don't like watching it until it's finished because if I watched it and I didn't like it, yeah. it's too late. I was going to ask you <laughs> ask you that because it's an interesting, to, you know, can you watch yourself on screen as a, as a an objective viewing or do you just hate to see yourself on screen full stop regardless of... of of that, you know. Oh, look, for an actor, it's like, uh, it's like for everybody, actually, when you first hear your own voice. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I can't hear them. When, I can't listen know. back to these. You know, you know. Yeah, because uh, my when voice. you first start, you hear your own voice, and I don't know whether you've done any voice over Stuart, but no. you kind of, you think, ooh, God, what a horrible voice. But you do actually get used to it because that's part of the professionalism. You get used to hearing, especially when you do some voice work, Yeah. you get used to hearing your voice and it's the same with acting you, when you first start and you see yourself on screen you have a sort of like strange relationship yeah now i'm used to it now i kind of uh i'm uh, hypercritical i can't you know i can't separate the fact that if i see myself on screen i'm always thinking oh is that good or is that okay yeah. or is yeah. that okay yeah. but i'm much more used to it now so yeah. i don't sort of feel uncomfortable seeing myself on screen i just uh it is a process though where i'm sure, very yeah. critical of myself I mean, if the time was half as good as Rogue Warrior, like you say, I think it's it's going to be. It is going to. It sounds epic, and I I generally can't can't wait to see it. What else are you working on at the moment? Then what's 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 coming out next? I've got. You? A film, look, I'm glad you asked. Actually, I've, the Time War is next. Won't be out till next yeah. year. But I've got yeah. a film coming out, which is in a fantastic role. Uh, and the the film is called The Axiom, and uh, it's a horror film. Nice, nice. Okay. And, I play the like the lead antagonist, and it is a uh, look. It's going to be amazing. It's right. people disappearing in national parks. Okay, all right. And is to do. It's a bit stranger things, but it's completely different. It's like there's portals in okay. national parks that open up into other worlds, and in those worlds are incredible monsters. Right. And I won't tell you any more than that. <laughs> it, it's very smart, smart, well-written, great film, and it comes out first showing because we filmed it last year. Yeah. It's going to be in, I think, October twenty-third. Is, I'm is not it, sure when it's going to hit, hit the screens, but they're starting the publicity now. On nice. It. So that's so the, that's the theatre release that, then. That's very that's excited that. about the Time War, yeah. and uh, working again once again with Tracy. I've just done a, a film called. Uh, which is a short film, but it was a really good story called Lake. Okay. Uh, playing a lead role in that. And, and and the other thing, I just scored a role as, I didn't come here to do theatre, but I have been offered a quite a lucrative theatre role uh, at a well-known theatre here. So right. And uh, I have an understudy, so I probably will do that, go okay. back on the boards. Okay, yeah. It's sharp. Yeah. And so what are, the theatres here are very small, so it's actually... Uh, um, so your delivery can actually be quite intimate. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that because it's going to be quite a controversial play. It's it's very very Los Angeles. Okay, all right. I mean, theatre was like yeah, your your, your yeah, first that, was theatre your first love. Then it was like theatre where you kind of you know. Do you prefer theatre to filming or? No, I don't. I prefer both. Yeah. Uh, no, I I love I love film. I love film because. I did a, an awful lot of theatre when I was young. For 20 years, I did almost back-to-back theatre because that was the grounding in New Zealand. Yeah. <clears throat> I was very for- fortunate because it's not like this world anymore. And I don't know whether in your neck of the woods where the same thing happened. Yeah. But in the 70s, 1970s, 80s, we had a very, very strong theatre culture in New Zealand that was supported by the government. And right. you've got 
when you came out of drama school, you did a year's apprenticeship at a, at a professional theatre. Yeah. There were professional theatres in all the smaller towns, all supported by the government, and you got paid on contract, year contract. Yeah. So you would work at a theatre. It was like repertory, actually. Mm. But paid. Yeah. And <clears throat> so you would actually spend an entire year and then another year contract work just back-to-back -back professional plays. And uh, that was an incredible experience. So for yeah. the first 20 years, I did a lot of plays, and then I kind of got burnt out. In fact, strangely enough, <clears throat> the last <clears throat> play before I stopped, and then I stopped for 20 years, yeah. <clears throat> was a uh, was Peter Jackson's uh, Brain Dead. Right. No, Brain Dead? Yes, Brain Dead. As a musical, it was a stage musical wow. of brain, a zombie, <laughs> a zombie film on stage. So that was the last show I did, and I played Uncle Let. And um, and then I gave up theatre for a very long time. Yeah. And to come back to your question, what I I love the fact with film and TV at its best, where you can be so real and so close and the yeah. camera's right in your face yeah. and there's no you don't have to throw your performance to yeah. an audience yeah. you can just be completely inside the character yeah. and i absolutely love that and yeah. theater is a little bit different and you can't, can't get away from the fact that you do actually have to throw your performance to the back of the room yeah yeah and that's why i said here about in, intimate there's a lot of intimate theaters here. yeah it means that you don't actually do it's like I mean, if you're in a theatre and there's eight, it's like 800 people, yeah. then you've really got to amplify your yeah. performance. You can't get away with being real. Yeah. You can't talk yeah. about it. <laughs> Everything you do has to be, even if it's in there. I love you, darling. <laughs> I, look at, I love you. Yeah. It's me. <laughs> I mean, it's a strange time. It's, it's a strange time, isn't it? Well, I say a strange time. It's it, because now, I mean, you talk about TV and, and Rogue Warrior is going to be hopefully made into a you know TV adaptation and, and so forth. Oh, that's um, right. That's the other thing. We're yeah. looking forward to. We're going to do a series on it. It's yeah. Are you going to be fun. involved with that as well? Is it? Are you? Oh yeah. yeah. Nice yeah. one. Nice. I mean, oh. TV is kind of it's like catchy. it's become now, hasn't it? So it's. I, I genuinely think that we're in a, a golden age of of television. I mean. There's so much great stuff out there now being made, and with all, you know, you've got Netflix, you've got Amazon, you've got you know some great stuff. Um, and now it seems now that actors are just fighting to be on TV, whereas maybe 20, 30 years ago, you know, the likes of Anthony Hopkins or whoever wouldn't wouldn't appear on a, a TV series. And now it's like that's where it is, isn't it? TV seems to be now taking over movies. I think. Yeah, well, I think that the line, <clears throat> the um. The lines are becoming more and more blurred. Yeah, yeah. Because let's face it, home theatre is becoming bigger and bigger mm. um, as well. Mm. You know? mm. And you know, I think you're right. The quality of, of, because of this new world that we now live in, whereas, you know, old-fashioned days, you know, you, down in old New Zealand would have Channel 1, Channel 2. What's on TV? <laughs> channel 1. Yeah. The we news. we have oh, three. Channel 2. Oh, it's the news. <laughs> <laughs> that was the same here in the UK too. We and have three channels. Yeah. What you watch, when you want to yeah. watch it. There's the most and the most amazing content coming out here yeah. all the time. Yeah. Great, great television yeah. series. Yeah. And you're right. I think there's, uh, uh, yes, the lines between the cinema yeah. and TV are becoming a lot more blurred. Well, listen, William, I've, I've taken a lot of your time up. I do really appreciate it. I've been wanting to talk to you for, for a long time, and you haven't disappointed. The stories are absolutely fabulous. I'm really pleased Thank to see you. you doing so well in LA as well. And I can't wait to see the Axiom. I will definitely be looking out out, out for that in the next, in next few weeks. Yeah, um, I'll send you some stuff as, as we go Please do. That would be um, great, yeah, because um, yeah. I'll get that on the website. And hopefully, we'll yeah, it is. And just between you and I, it is actually... Uh, it's a smart. I wouldn't have done it. It's a. It's a great, great young director. Nice. Uh, with a. With um, you know, with all the right contact. Yeah. Contacts. Yeah. And a great cut. It's going to be a very, very interesting film. It's. It's completely dangerous and out there, and um, I'm. I'm excited for it. Good. So am I. I'll, so I'll let you know. Looking for. Yeah. Absolutely. Listen. You have a great day. Thank you very I much. I will, Stuart. Yeah. I love. It's great to talk to you, man. You and too, mate. To Time. So you take care and have a lovely night. You too. Have a great day, mate. You take care. Well Cheers, done. William. Cheers, Cheers, my man. Bye-bye. Thanks, Tom. Bye.